Alrighty then, well, a long time ago an amazing movie came out, a movie so incredible that it's hard to even explain or put into words, but I'm going to give it a shot. The movie stars Chris Kattan and Will Ferrell as the Batabi brothers, two clubbing failures. They're absolutely embroiled in an intense world where they're trying to make it to the top. And not only is the movie incredibly fucking hilarious, but it's actually kind of heartwarming and special at the end of the days, where the deep, brooding, dark worlds of club culture meets funny hilarity and innocence. And it's a wonderful little scene of just how these two young privileged boys live their life and aspire to be something so much more than they were meant to be. Now, I must have watched this movie 20, 30 times in the last 20 years. So, I mean, I've seen pretty much every scene and it never gets old. It's one of those movies where you kind of just every once in a while love to just go live with the Batabi brothers. And it's a crying shame that we never got more of this. I mean, we could have had so many. We could have had three Night at the Roxbury movies and we wouldn't have missed a beat. Every single substantial uh, addition would have just been box office smash hits and a modern one today would just be legendary. But Farrell's incredible success and Catan's relative obscurity probably led to a little bit of a disjointing in the Night at the Roxbury series. And it probably led to the fact that we've never seen one at least starring these two together since that time. So not only am I going to be coming out with an awesome music video for this wicked, uh, wicked movie, but I'm also going to break it down to in the fullest and most incredible effect that has ever been done on the internet. Now it's well known that uh, Night at the Roxbury came from skits on Saturday Night Live starring the legendary Jim Carrey, which would have made it absolutely fucking awesome to come out with a second one, introducing Carrey as a character, but things like that just never unfortunately materialized. And as is tradition with Saturday Night Live, the skits are very short and cheap feeling and doesn't have the same weight as the movie itself. Now, of course, the movie starts off with these two just being utter fucking losers, trying to just be young, privileged kids trampling around the uh, the the town at night uh, and just getting into whatever fun debauchery they possibly can. But I mean, if anybody like myself, who has done a major amount of clubbing, has uh, experienced, is that there's lots of deviancy and badness to be found in every corner in club culture. And it kind of resonates in this movie. And the family itself is pretty uptight, I would call it. The mama has like fake tits and is all all weird and plasticky. And the dad is just another asshole businessman. But I mean, it, this is a perfect, uh, perfect example of what privileged young rich kids would get up to on a Saturday night. Hilariously, these two suits are absolutely ridiculous ridiculous and iconic and they actually have a few variety for variations but it's always bombastic they're always uh completely silly looking and dressed uh it, it's it's awesome co costume work uh just the utter level of ridiculousness that these two look like throughout the movie and when that first night in at the Roxbury comes for these two, it's a moment of utter legendariness as they just go on a night of complete debauchery, ripping up the town and uh, by the lovely Mr. Zadir, who's just, he's just such a cool character and he represents that awesome side of things where he's, he's kind, he's a kind club owner and th that is just such a wicked premise. I mean, we could have gotten so much of Mr. Zadir. He was incredible. See, how you could have made the second movie is you could have made it so that like their club uh, is their, their club is uh, 
you know, opened and super popular and Mr. Zadir gives over the business to these two and they become the moguls. I mean, like, there's so much they could have done with this story and they just dropped out. And like I said previously, probably the general reason for that is just Feral became such a big success. They didn't really even need this secondary thing. And I would call this sort of cult classic. I mean, for me, it's one of the most legendary movies that I've ever seen in my life. But the, uh, I mean, I think the general public is just finds it as a silly, stupid, kind of out there type uh laugh fest and it was never really taken seriously for what it is now of course we've got to talk about the gratuitous sexual nature of this movie as there's many scenes of humping and uh, sexual and innuendos and stuff and it was certainly awkward to watch back when I was young as a kid with my parents but the um, the it never it never goes too over the top and, you know, the club culture, they showed a lot uh, less than that. There's no reference to drugs and very little to, al and to alcohol. Um, well, I mean, I guess it's, has, there's lots of alcohol use in it. But there, there's just very little uh, um, dark sides to this. And I, I'd assume it's showing more, more of the, the better side of it. And one of the things they just cannot... Be understated is how incredibly fucking awesome the soundtrack is. I mean, the soundtrack, as anybody who loves electronic music such as myself knows, this is just a banger after banger after banger, including the title track, um, Hadaway, What is Love, is spectacular, but there's other bangers in here as well, and I would I would encourage you to check over the whole soundtrack because they very cleverly place it throughout the movie uh, within, and uh, and there's some good mixes in here. There are also a lot of things not fit for modern audiences in this movie, I mean, including these just absolute whores that <laughs> they hook up with, which is hilarious because anybody who's been involved in the club lifestyle knows that girls just like these two. And it's kind of heartbreaking to know, know that poor, uh, poor uh, fucking... <laughs> Poor, uh, poor Butabi bros get uh, get used and played like this, uh, and, and the way that they present themselves in this film is just hilarious. Because nothing of that nature would be allowed today. And you know, it's so special special to see all the things that after all the bad things that happen to these two boys just to happen at the end you know the way it goes with mr zadir and the way they both find women that are right for them after years of looking or whatever it's such a special story it just really makes you feel good it's a good feel good f movie i mean there are some parts a little bit not that that great i mean maybe anyway, 13 plus this is a great feel good movie the familiarity of uh Will Ferrell makes it iconic today. And you know what? Like, it's a movie that I hope just lots of people have watched. And everybody will watch it. And if you haven't watched the movie, I would encourage you today to go watch it. It's just, it's a lovely movie. Richard Grieco is amazing. Uh, their buddy is really amazing. The characters are just so full and amazing in this. And you know what? Like, we have to come back to the fact of why there wasn't a sequel to this. And you know, it's p punishing and painful because I could make a movie that is a wicked sequel to this movie in like a weekend. <laughs> Just give me a fucking film crew, give me Farrell and Catan, and I could bring you billions of dollars in profit. This is, I mean, it is, it's these iconic types of movies that really resonate and stick with people and stick with them in their heart. And that's, if that's not a selling factor into what, um, you know what a good movie is i don't know what is i mean there's certain types of movies obviously you want your gore and blood and, and guts and whatnot but night at the roxbury is a type of movie that you just never get sick of watching it, i'm i'm always good for every couple of years to a year of always watching this movie and it is the 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 every scene is uh, iconic and every scene is wonderful to watch 
So yeah, some uh, movie executive shoot me a line and we could make this fucking movie because this movie needs a sequel. This movie needs a sequel worse, I think, than any other movie out there because the club lifestyle and modern music has changed. Like we saw in Zoolander 2, cultures and people change and there's something encapsulating about culture of 90s clubs. And this movie is just a time capsule into that style no matter how ridiculous no matter how extreme this movie tends to go to uh it's it's a wonderful wonderful watch and if anything i would hope that club culture is still maintains in this type of level none of the dirty drum and bass none of the scuzzy dealers cultures that we find this movie is just pure at its heart a good time and i love these two and i love this fucking movie so thanks for watching and i hope you go check this movie out because it's night the roxbury is is god tier movie uh it's funny it's excellent it makes you feel good inside and honestly it's just a very special movie to me